I'm sure the majority of you, if not all of you, have seen uh, at least highlights of Joe Hendry and Frankie Kazarian participating in the NXT Battle Royal. Frankie Kazarian was the one I think was a little bit of a, a surprise. Now, I wasn't on Twitter at all during the day, so if, if that was um, announced previously, that was news to me. But uh, for me, that's that, that was a bit of a surprise. I think everyone expected that Joe Hendry would be there. The The demand for him to be a part of this was there. And, you know, he it was very interesting because he comes out and he cuts a very long promo. They give him plenty of TV time to to go through his whole spiel. The people were into it, even though I question the authenticity of the NXT audience at times. Uh, they were very into it. And when Jordan was, um, I don't remember if it was her match versus Roxanne Perez or when she came out to challenge her, the fans were chanting, we believe. And that's something I kind of forgot to touch on previously. But it was pretty clear that he was, he was very likely to uh, be a part of this, but he got he got plenty of mic time, and then he goes in a battle royal and he's eliminated immediately. And I initially couldn't tell who did. Uh, this article I was reading said Ethan Page tossed him. I thought it was Frankie Kazarian. I couldn't really tell what it was. I know Frankie Kazarian was yelling at him, and they're going to further that storyline, which is funny because when they paired the two of them together and against all odds, it was very random. It was very, very out of left field. It just came off like an excuse to get both guys on the card. They had a faulty finish, which didn't look good. Uh, but Frankie Kazarian did get the win. And now they're kind of, you know, furthering that angle a little bit using NXT. So it's, it's, it's like TNA is doing some stuff very much over our heads. And we're just not used to that. <laughs> we're used to some some pretty predictable stuff, some pretty predictable booking. Now, let's talk Joe Hendry first. You know, you, you can go around on social media and see a lot of the TNA fans upset with how he was eliminated. Remember what I told you guys. And see, I, I understand that sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm right. Um, sometimes... Information can change, you know, but really what was relayed to me was that this is this partnership is more about promotion for TNA than anything. As far as what how TNA benefits. And they did that here. You know, like Joe Hendry, they the demand is there for him. It didn't matter if he was in there for a second or or what. If they left him in there too long, the, the crowd would have turned on the match. It would have been Brian Danielson getting eliminated from the Royal Rumble once upon a time. If they let Joe Hendry stay in there too long, the fans were going to want him to win. So, you know, they did what they felt they needed to do. He's still over with the people. He got a big promo. He was the only one to get an entrance besides Ethan Page, which I really hope there's not an angle where he comes to TNA because I have no interest in Ethan Page. Um, but I, I mean, I, I see fans upset and it did not bury TNA. Again, this is about promoting the product. Uh, it actually leaves people wanting more, wanting to see Joe Hendry in the ring and do his thing. And, you know, of course, you know, the chatter is there like, oh, well, now NXT is going to want this guy. And, and they probably will. I mean, they probably do. Uh, because even though I've made the comments about Jordan, when it comes to Joe Hendry, like there's an actual demand for him. There's not there's not a demand for Jordan Grace as more than it appears that the NXT and the WWE uh, management seem to really like her. So where Joe Hendry, there, there's now kind of a demand. And what he's trying to accomplish with music and all that, like, Hey, that WWE platform would be massive for that dude one day. Um, but that's, that's really neither here nor there. Uh, TNA has to do a good job of booking him throughout the year. Um, 
is he going to be in the main event Slammiversary? It's a possibility. Could he win the title at one point? I mean, they're they're uh, you know if they if they want him to be a centerpiece going forward or you know or part of their just part of the team, one of their one of their uh, top guys going forward, then they're going to have to start showing him now. You know, um, get him at the top of the card. Take advantage of this momentum. You know, and prepare to make him a, a competitive offer in a year. You know, um, it's been it's been a long time since someone really, really organically in TNA got over to this extent. You know, Matt Hardy is one of them, and that started off very, very rough. If you remember, EC3 did to an extent, but it was more still within the TNA bubble. As far as outsiders really wanted to to check the product you know like this this is the first time in a while like he's the you know another one of my wnba references he's their caitlin clark at the moment you know is he gonna be the dude that um that really starts getting those eyeballs over on the watching the show that haven't been watching it before like he may be that dude he's the closest thing to it we know that you can you can push whoever you want at the top, the the mooses, and you know, going back to when Lucha Underground went down, and there's oh, so let's put the title on Penta, let's put the title on Brian Cage, like you you can do all these things, but it it's never going to have the impact as someone who just organically the people want. You can bring people in from other companies that are that are hot, and you can try to elevate them. But something like this, this is special. This is rare. And, you know, they got to find that right balance of uh, Joe Hendry's comedic side, the musical side, but then show that he can wrestle too. So uh, I know TNA is very, very happy with the reception. NXT obviously was. They want to use them again in the future. And again, going back to, you know, what I said about people being upset about him uh, with the quick elimination and all that, because he did get an angle with Shawn Michaels too. Frankie Kazarian was the one. He was the workhorse. It, it wasn't like Joe Hendry was the only person in the match and he was just dumped out. Like He got over, folks. It's not just about showing your wrestling. Frankie Kazarian, he did the wrestling. He, he was the wrestling guy in this match. He lasted very long. I knew he wasn't going to win. I thought Shawn Spears was going to. I knew he would at least be there in the last couple. Uh, a lot of people in these this battle royal look like absolute jabrones. I mean, it, it looked like the cast from Iron Claw was in there uh, with, with some of the dudes. But the guy who won is r- really impressive. I, Javon something or other. Uh, I, I don't remember his last name, but Evans maybe. Uh, but he, he was really, really good. So, you know, I enjoyed the battle royal for the most part. But Frankie Kazarian was the workhorse. He was the guy uh, showing off, hey, we got some guys in TNA who can go in the ring and who can wrestle and who can do some things. And, um, you know, that's what that was. Joe Hendry is a character uh, who can wrestle, but he did get over it. And this, you know, eight plus million uh, views on Twitter, which which is a extreme number because uh, there's a loop on Twitter. Uh, some people are watching it more than once, but I mean, there's a still big time numbers that I think they said were the biggest since uh, WrestleMania of uh, any other clip. So there's a big time demand there. And that, that is the best pay best case scenario for TNA is to have one of their guys on WWE programming and have more views and attention than any of the people in their company. I mean, that's, that's big time. And this isn't the AEW partnership where you know tna guys are just just being fed to AEW talents when i say AEW, i mean tna guys i mean obviously it was rich swan uh callahan lost moose lost the good brothers were not really booked very strongly over there you know like that was a joke of a partnership they got a, a little bit of a bump because of Ken- kenny omega but this is how a partnership should work. It should be mutually beneficial. The, the one with the AEW was not mutually beneficial. It maybe was for like a week or two, but a- after that, it, it wasn't. You know what I mean? Um, so this is 
this is going to be a lot of fun going forward, folks. Uh, again, I'm going to ask people to temper their expectations as far as NXT talents coming over to the TNA side. Uh, clearly, with Tatum Paxley, that it, it is going to be a thing. And, um, of course, I had some of you motherfuckers say, well, BQ said, <laughs> no matter how much I try to, to backpedal on that or uh, explain further that things could change, still some of you motherfuckers, oh, you said no one from NXT was going to show up. I told you that there was no plans at the time I spoke to them, uh, but that that could very easily change and that it was expected to happen. There just wasn't a plan for it because Jordan Grace was plan B. Um, or I don't know if she was plan B, but the way she debuted was plan B. Plan A had an immediate crossover planned. But, uh, you know, to go back to what I said, I would keep expectations kind of low as far as who's going to show up from NXT over to uh, the TNA side. Like, it, it could be Ethan Page, which I don't have interest in that, like I said. But nothing from the Battle Royal made it seem like, hey, one of these guys is going to show up on TNA. At least not in my opinion. Like, it looked like they were furthering Frankie and Joe Hendry just like they kind of tried to promote Ash by Elegance and, and Jordan Grace. You know, except that Joe Hendry, it's clear that he's going to be back. So we'll, we'll see what he does. If he wrestles for an NXT title one day, that, that could be cool. I don't think they're going to do that after Jordan just wrestled. But, you know, they'll, they'll find something interesting for him to do. So, uh, of course, leave your thoughts and, you know, I, allow yourself to be talked off the ledge for those of you who thought that Joe Hendry should have had some kind of big run in the battle Royal. Again, the longer he was in there, the more the fans were going to want him to win. And they did the right thing here in my opinion, but TNA is very happy with it. NXT is happy with it. And uh, that's, what's important at the end of the day with this partnership. And then the fans will ultimately benefit. 